You're listening to Black Girl Blueprint. Because Black Girls did it first. And honestly, better. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Black Girl Blueprint, your fave podcast for all the Gen Z Black Girl tea. My name is Lauren. And my name is McKean and thank you guys for tuning into today's episode. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time. It's long been a time minute. No seen, it's been a minute. Say. Um, we've just had a lot going on. Yeah. We've been adulting. We've been taking the months in stride mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and it's what time is now. Time? What is time? What is adulting? Yeah. And what is life? A construct. It's and so true. A construct of who? Capitalism. Capitalism <laughs> and the man. Well, that is the perfect segue. I know we were going to say this episode was about capitalism, but it's just so entrenched. You have to go in there. You know, it's going to be about it anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You know. So, today we'll be talking about mm-hmm. how capitalism, girl boss culture, grind, mm-hmm. hustle culture, yeah. labor, working, getting a job, building a resume, LinkedIn, all of those things affect our day-to-day lives and then also as a follow-up to our last episode like how do they meet and connect with the dreams that we have for ourselves and the desires that we have for how we spend our time yeah i think there's a nuanced conversation here about how capitalism just yeah is so entrenched and even how we think about ourselves and like our worth our productivity even like what we dream about like labor um not being a big part of that or Mm -hmm. like wanting to work but also still wanting nice things you know or still like having to work to survive just being the reality of the world that we live in so how do we balance that with also protecting our peace you Mm -hmm. know with like wanting to live good quality lives wanting to prioritize other things yeah but yeah sometimes a job you need a job you need to a pay job, the bills child, you need literally. and in this world things are expensive too mm-hmm. and cost of living as a concept too like things are just yeah. getting more and more expensive and also i don't know if this is a real thing but like the luxurification of everything that's been a very like, constant trend luxury I've seen. skincare was not something for the masses before like no. and now like i have access to it because the internet and i want it no, true but even and the soft money. Yeah. lifestyle you know that's a part of it as Black well girl too. luxury like yeah. how are these all desires and how are these all trends on the same internet that is also a very anti-capitalist yeah supposedly exactly in, like what we see to value mm-hmm. so just where do they meet in irl exactly like, that's, what we're that's the conflict mm-hmm. what we want to get into because there is like layers and nuance here so we're gonna just unpack it yeah. all peel it back all of it layer by layer the underbelly and get into it yes but, but first <laughs> the read the room yes you let them know you know what we do every episode pop culture tea real life tea your life tea Today we have some pop culture like black girls have been winning. Black girls have been doing so black great. Black girls have been winning, and like in every facet of society, yeah, like in the movies, true. in like I don't just in every Everything. area we can just can yeah we just do it so well. Mm. We have to talk about our queen, our princess, Miss Holly our Bailey. Miss Holly Bailey. I feel like the Bailey oh. sisters have just guided this pin, this like podcast because when we started, they had dropped on Godly Hour, hour. And we were talking about it constantly every episode, <laughs> and yeah. now and we now got solo albums. We've we got <laughs> <laughs> no, but but real. Okay, so, sorry, that was so funny. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> we got solo albums. Yes, we got movies. And we got movies. And movies plural. Movies plural. Because it wasn't Chloe Bailey. Did you see the trailer for that church movie? Yeah. <laughs> But it did feel nostalgic. That, it does feel nostalgic. Did you watch um, <laughs> Joyful Noise? No. Um, that's, what, that's crazy. Kiki I know, I know. With Dolly Parton? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With the t- Kiki Palmer? That was, it feels like that, yeah. That was a moment. It feels like a throwback like Disney movie. I have to watch it. We'll I watch agree. it and report back. Yeah. But Hallie is in The Color Purple and, and Little, Little Mermaid, Mermaid right now. That's true. Little Mermaid, number one movie in the world. Oh, it's so, so cute. good. I've seen it twice. You saw it twice? I've seen it twice. Uh, it's I saw it once. I I'm gonna go back though. You should go yeah. back because I don't know. Part of your world just touched mm-hmm. an emotional nerve for me that that song mm-hmm. has never really hit like yeah. that before. Yeah, I used I to like, love the Little Mermaid, but I was just like, this is some. But this is I new. felt her like desires so to heavily. Do more. Yeah, her, like dreams. Her like you know tenacity mm-hmm. as well too. The the first Little Mermaid. I don't know. She wasn't eating. And Prince Eric. True. Also, it felt like a silly pretty. want of hers. Like exactly. I think they really legitimized like what not to 
make this intellectual. No, a Disney it's movie. intellectualize it. <laughs> in first layers. But, like, they really made real what she, like, why, the why she wanted to get out of the water. Exactly. Like, get out of the water. <laughs> Halle Bailey said that in an interview. She was oh, like, really? I think in the first Little Mermaid, because I think a critique of the first Little Mermaid was like, oh, she gives up her voice for a man, mm-hmm. you know? But in this one, Halle was just like, they're really focusing on, like, her desire to, like, live a different life and, like, yeah. follow her. And, and like, the trinkets and her, like, yeah. it's not really about Prince Eric. Like, he's mm-hmm. a fun little plus, but... It really it was wasn't about him. Was oh, my God. That got bet on a number. <laughs> What does he call it? Wild or Tartar Water? I hated that. Like, I, that was the only scene I genuinely was like, why? Why was he swigging? And why was every he so long? Minute. It was long. He was belting. He did his little thing. I know he studied Troy Bolton for that. He I know he did. He was giving musical theater. He was giving theater boy. But I liked him more than I liked the animated Prince Eric, I will yeah. say. And I think the way Maybe that they... Maybe he was the black mama. It's spoiler the, alert. First of all, it was the black mama. The only spoiler alert. You can tell he was raised by a black woman, basically. It's the vibe that he had. But I also, like, the way that they juxtapose him, like, being so obsessed with the ocean and her mm-hmm. wanting to be land, I was like, I feel them more as a couple. Yeah, they came together, like. That's a lot more. They, yeah, like, it was less like random, world, like, the first you know. boy that I see. Yeah. I was just like, who is this man? Mm-hmm. And they made him, like, kind. The dog yeah. was cute. He was brave. Mm-hmm. You know, it was I cute. was like, not for me personally. It was cute. In my ministry. But mm-hmm. I'm like, for you, Hallie. Yeah, for her. Do your thing. For him, for them. Yes. For them. I agree. My only qualms. Okay. I have two. Okay. The first was the costuming. I agree. I agree. The hair, yeah. incredible. Hair, hair and makeup killed it. Like, but that little band on her hair. The whole band. time. And then, like, she wore one dress the Two whole dress. movie. I agree. Did she do that in the animated one too? I no, they gave her a few fits. Like there was that purple dress. I think they had her in the mm-hmm. animated one when she goes to the party. Yeah. And it's like they switched Where it up more. It? Even her coming out of the water in that same ratty blue dress. I'm like, Again, you tried right. it, give her. I'm like, did that float to sea? Oh, All this so magic. Slow, All this magic. But y'all can't be a magic fit. Yeah, 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 there can't be a magic um, fit. She mm-hmm. couldn't come in like a little gold dress out type. Literally, thing. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I was a little disappointed in the costume. Okay, what's the other qualm? The other qualm that I had was, wait, what was it? Oh, where were we in the world? I think we were in the Caribbean. I just was like, I liked the involvement of the West Indian people. And I I actually thought Sebastian wasn't too bad, even though he was a Jamaican. He, that was my qualm. Oh, really? It had to grow on me. Yeah. It it was jarring in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But as the lines got funnier, I was like, okay. The writing was good. The, the writing, writing was felt good. like a Jamaican oh, wrote it. it. That's true. <laughs> the little muttering, I was just right. like, that is a West Indian <laughs> crap. Yeah. Literally. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aquafina. Uh, scuttlebutt. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> was silly. We'll keep it moving. We'll keep Next on the roster. <laughs> Let's we'll move along. But Next on the roster. Big hearts. Big hearts. Go see it. We're so proud Yes. Mm-hmm. Next on the list. Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. Okay. So Janelle Coming Monet. to save the summer. Honestly, these are summer songs. When so we you don't were, know. Yeah, exactly. well, we had no songs of the summer. We up until last week. Be? That's so true. I was to listen to Renaissance. Yeah, like, listen. That's last summer. Because she's touring. Like she made herself have two summers. No, that's so yeah. true. Oh, I love that for her. Yeah. I didn't think about that, but I'm like, you she really planned she it. Cared. She Ren- it's another she Renaissance it, summer. She dropped at the end of last summer just so we had like a little bit of time to like oh. go out with it. And then still wanted more. It's her mind. We were, yeah, wow, well, her crazy. mind. Yeah, yeah, she's crazy. Yeah. We'll talk about her in a second. Mm. But Janelle Monet, I have always loved them. I've yeah. always been a huge, huge, not, well, maybe not huge, huge, but I've always thought that they're great and talented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> yeah, so I had to pull that back a little bit. Yeah. I'm just really excited because of these summer bops. So if you don't know, Janelle Monet just recent album. Mm-hmm. It's called The Age of Pleasure. Mm-hmm. And it's giving sexy. It really it's is. It's giving summer. It's giving we're by the pool. Yeah. It's giving we're having we're lots swimming. of sex. It's fun. Yeah, it's there's true. like a lot of like Afrobeats. Exactly. Like Calypso. Like, Calypso is the vibe that I was feeling. Yeah. Mm. The songs are good. It's, it's giving. really good. It's there's giving. like a few love songs on there. Yeah. There's like a lot of like bad bitch tracks. There's like a good yeah. mix of things. I Do you have songs can you name that you like? No, yeah, because I, like. I just listened today. Okay. Oh, well, I liked Hot. It's like okay. a one minute song. That was and it's kind of funky. crazy. Like, I like that, that one. That was actually my favorite. That was fun. And then the one right next to it, right after, I can't remember what it's called, okay. but that one was a banger. I remember I said that to my friend. That's fair. <laughs> I listened to Lipstick Lover when it first came out. Mm-hmm. I thought that was fun. The music video also. I've yet to watch. Can you believe? Uh, I, I saw all the clips cool. everywhere. I meant to. It was wonderful. I just had such fun time <laughs> watching it. You know, well, part of the discourse as well, too, oh. is that Janelle Monet 
has been having her boobies out. But no, I'm a fan, personally. Titties to the wind. I'm like, let them free. Why not? It's a free the nipple summer. We literally have almost died like as a country That's and what as I mean. a world. As a society, <laughs> I'm like, let the boobs free, personally. Uh, literally, and someone was just like, there have been a few different takes that have just been so questionable. Like, uh. there was this one podcast clip that people were circulating where the lady's like, oh, you have to, like, take your titties out to sell albums. That's and everyone's like, true. for the whole, like, 10 years of her career that she started, the you Grammys, know she was next up. Like, in, the, in the suit and tie, literally, you know? Only skin was neck and above. Like, no, that's truly. And, and also, both hairdos. were crazy and both were amazing. We right. love them, so, like... But they've also not been paying attention to not see, like, Janelle's, like, evolution. Literally the vagina pants. Right. I'm, like, from the dirty computer era where Tessa Thompson was coming to the womb and they were, listen, I'm, like, the sex has always yeah. been there and the vibe. I'm, like... And the funk. And like, the funk and the, like, just desire to be free. Like, mm-hmm. even, like, pronouns-wise. Yep. Their pronouns is free ass. This is, like, a beautiful I'm evolution like, that we're witnessing. Exactly. And, like, and I'm, like, sense. so excited for their openness, that celebration of queerness, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like, this is... Pride Month. Yep. Great Honestly, time. That's true. Right to in time. Right before Juneteenth. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, that's beautiful. And it's like a, speaking of Renaissance, like it really does mesh well. Like they just feel like quintessential, like I summer agree. Babbage free, like I agree. Forget the rules, like throw it all out the window no. type albums. It's in a way good. that it's like what we do. It's like it's like kinda like the vibe of Break My Soul, but more like with like the like idea of being like mm-hmm. we're just out there. A laid you know? back. Like exactly. it's almost like and I hate to say this because it's going to be like really reductive, mm. but it is almost like if Beyonce meets Solange musically. I, I could see like, that a little the bit. There's the laid backness of the like Solange album and the like vocals wise yeah, too. Yeah, I feel yeah, that right. It's like softer, but, but then it's also like creative still funky wise, and, like, funky. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a funny little mix of this is. You might have different I've been trying to see it my whole life somewhere, so. Yeah. yeah. No, Janelle, go listen to the album. Yeah. yeah you can send us a little DM. Like, what you think? Literally. Oh, we are having real fun I would go see her. I would yeah, go see her. I would totally yeah. go. And I don't be feeling that. Yeah, so. it's so talented. Mm-hmm. Glass Onion, also the time I spent my New Year's Eve. Yeah, Watching too, that yeah. talent wow. through the breakers. Honestly. I'm a big fan. The gift that keeps on giving. I, big fan, not mm, huge. No. Big. Yeah, big, big fan. Big. <laughs> nice. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. We can just get into yeah. the, the episode from here. So today, like we said, we're talking about capitalism. But we, I think we should take it back to the time before capitalism was like so salient in our knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, like before. I guess we really understood that jobs were money. I know in our last episode we talked a little bit about like dreams and like mm-hmm. what our dreams were when we were earlier, but. I think even the question of like asking kids so young like what their dream job yeah, yeah. is going to be kind of like the question itself means envisioning a future and hope that like that has this like mm-hmm. type of like labor in it or like you have to kind of pick from a select type of things or I'm just thinking about like my little my nephew Mm -hmm. recently had like come as like a i guess like future career day at work Mm -hmm. not work at school (laughs) at preschool (laughs) at work (laughs) but but most of the kids came as like doctors and lawyers Mm -hmm. and like dress up and he came as like a paleontologist i Mm -hmm. guess and like his things were like astronaut and they were like kind of like these like out of the worldy types of things right, compared right. to I was like these other kids were just mm-hmm. doing the same like doctor lawyer, yeah, like these more like tangible money careers I'm like from mm-hmm. so early too I'm like where's the imagination like he's just so into yeah. dinosaurs and that's the only thing that matters mm-hmm. is that he's like I love I dinosaurs see. he's not thinking about enough. the fact that there's like I don't know if he's gonna actually go to archaeology he but literally said what job he said I like job. this yeah. but that is we've talked about before like the way to make decisions mm-hmm. i guess and like leading with just raw desires yeah. and that's like sweet to see but then thinking about the way the capitalism stands that out in some ways is yeah really interesting. it is disheartening and it's like and we've talked about this part before so it's interesting now to see how it translates and like what remains because mm-hmm. while your like desire to be a paleontologist might not stick with you yeah you still do stick within the frameworks that you're told are possible really early on like yeah and you try to keep imagining it like i remember like for a while i was when i was little i was like i want to be a lawyer so like now i guess my favorite classes are going to be like social studies and this mm-hmm. one like it i was think i wasn't constantly thinking about like a but job it but it you. shapes like the things that you 
are interested in and then you start to increasingly think about like your interests and how they meet how you'll like live right because you you know there's the pressure of like college and then you once you're approaching college you're already starting to think of like after college like what Mm -hmm. type of major am i going to take that leads me to a job and like there is this just like security thing too also i think for people who may have grown up with parents who might have been like mm-hmm. thinking about money or like desiring security or, like even like watching your parents struggle or like I think yeah. about like the immigrant mentality yeah. as well too of like you know like we're working really hard like right. to survive but also you want to like get out of that in some degrees mm-hmm. and like that kind of yeah that and leads the, to a desire yeah. for security like kind of young you know yeah. and it like factors into your decisions as you get older and it starts to the feeling of that like coupled with the fact that you might feel like you owe your family exactly. whether it's like stuff that they've sacrificed for you or like they literally need your financial support like exactly you have to work That's you know like you don't it, it very yeah. quickly becomes clear that like you have no option but at some point to like get no. a job and like mm-hmm. live your life which yeah. It's perhaps not unfair. It sucks. It's a sad reality, <laughs> but though. But it's true, yeah. I think it, it always mm-hmm. makes me really saddened to see whatever people's, like, desires are in direct conflict with, like, their, like, mm-hmm. circumstance, yeah. you know? I think in a perfect world, I would love for everyone to be doing things that they love or, yeah. like, are happy to be doing, and that's just not a reality mm-hmm. and like that's just the world that we live in it's rare it's like, rare it's, a, it's even. really a privilege to like be in a yeah. circumstance where you can afford to live the type of life you want without sacrificing something else yeah yeah anyways i feel like it's interesting to think about it generationally mm-hmm. like we said we we are probably the first generation of most of our families if we're so lucky yeah. to have more option than past ones which we've talked about yeah and that's a lot of pressure but it's also a luxury of like you know like my great grandma was somebody's like maid and nanny yeah. so, so that i could go to college essentially you know yeah. i broadly like my whole generation of my family right. but now like okay we've gone to college and now it's like okay i have more choice mm-hmm. and i'm doing her wrong if i don't pursue them that's fair. but then it's also like how does that actually meet again with what your needs are yeah and I don't believe that she wanted to work. Absolutely, she did not want to work. She wanted to be some white family's nanny. Like, wants to so work. it's not the, yeah. the Gen Z like distinguisher no. is not based on the desire. Right. I think we should outline this Gen Z distinguisher a little yeah, bit more too, yeah. because I think there is a generational thing here. And again, I don't think it's obviously that our ancestors did not want to be working as hard as they were. You know, so this is not a new thing to be like labor is unfair. But I think we do have, I think, a privilege in some senses in like just like the reality of the culture that we live in but i think our mindsets also have shifted a little Mm -hmm. bit i think there's well post pandemic one i think this like i don't dream of labor mentality i guess even before that millennials have been saying that gen z people just didn't want to work but there is something in the rise of like social media and like easy money and technology or people yeah the types of jobs the types of jobs you know and like you grow up seeing like youtubers who are like just filming their lives and making millions that like does something i think to what your concept of like you know there's like this thing called the effort heuristic basically Mm. which might not necessarily apply as much here but it basically means that you value something based on like how much work you have to put in to mm-hmm. achieve it right, okay. if that makes sense and i just think that there's been some just like destabilizing i guess in our like a thought of like how much work we need to put in to and what we expect to get to out receive, of it yeah you know like a return of investment yeah. exactly like we just don't have as high of a one and i of uh, yeah high of a idea yeah of what we need to do for that hmm it's yeah. interesting and it's not like it's hard because it's like the internet does I feel like it's different in the way that the people that our past generations used to see mm-hmm. as aspirational, there were still celebrities and there still were like icons, yeah. but when you didn't know anything about them yeah. often, they weren't as like visible. So At it's, all. it is true. It's like when you, these are people that are, their whole brands are based of like being your friend, yeah. but they're in, in a entirely different class than you. In a tax and bracket. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, you're, like, now engaging every day with someone in the top 1% in the way that conflates things. And I don't actually think that's, like, a horrible thing. Like, mm-hmm. but there's it's not intrinsically wrong. about it, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. About, like, you see this person as a peer, but, like, you are not living the same life at all. Mm-hmm. But I even think about what we've witnessed change during our lifetimes, and it makes me really intrigued to see how things are going to change. But, like, remember back in the day and, like, 
2014. Like, if your video went viral, like, you <laughs> were going on Ellen, you know? Right. Like, you were, like, you were, like, getting some clout mm-hmm. off of that. But now, like, when on TikTok, like, a bunch of videos get, like, millions of views. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like the our reward. concept of a celebrity has changed so much. And we're, like, veering a little bit from, like, the capitalism conversation yeah. a little bit, too. But even, I don't know. I think... The thing that I do find interesting with the way that that peer dynamic develops is I think that there's something that capitalism does to the psyche in some ways in the way that it becomes entrenched in how you like perceive yourself and your worth and like it becomes tied to your pro- productivity because like you have mm-hmm. to work to live and it's like if I'm not working then like do I deserve to live and it's like yeah. not always that chin gen- like connected mm-hmm. explicitly but that is the general essence of what it is to exist within capitalism. But I think there's a part of that too that's if you're not like about the bag and grinding, you're like lazy, you're like Mm -hmm. not doing something well. And then especially with that culture then of comparison, when you're seeing these people who are like peers but making so much money, you kind of feel like I'm being lazy. Like I'm not working hard enough. Like we got the same 24 hours in the Mm -hmm. day. Like I'm, it like, it's but it's so unrealistic, you know? Like even that to a certain degree is kind of luck. Like Mm -hmm. I think about like, the Charlie D'Amelio's of the world. I'm mm-hmm. like, she was just dancing like Random. midly. Yeah, yeah. You know, like she wasn't even dancing that well. Oh, and like, they have just like a whole mm-hmm. family affair thing going yeah. on now. And it, yeah, I, I hear you. And it's tough because it's like, there is this whole, even outside of just social media, I think maybe as a symptom of the fact that like with with each generation there has been a lot more choice in the type of work that you do and specifically for women yeah like the type of jobs you can have and that's changing every day like and especially for black women like yeah. you still see like black women firsts and that is still something that is marketed as not something that's like a failure of the system but like of something that like you too can achieve and like should be desirable yeah so it's like paired with so you see these girls on the internet becoming millionaires for dancing yeah and then you see black women becoming like a a a rare select few yeah that are like making business milestones like bozema st john or like ones that are becoming millionaires as ceos of these corporate companies or something yeah and it's like okay like they're making history and there's still history to be made Mm -hmm. so it's It's a responsibility like yeah it's all these things and it's like then there is the thing you said about like the whole girl boss like yeah you you feel as though your pressures on your daily life even before we even graduated college like Mm -hmm. the pressure of me in an internship and how i perform like this is going to reflect on me and like change my whole life if i don't like outperform everybody in this thing also the fact that the decisions (laughs) that you're making so early in your life are supposed to determine your whole life like where you go to college it's a baby making that decision it is like all of these pressures that are coming from all of these directions that then really make it hard to connect back to what do I actually like want yeah and and then also how am I spending my time Mm -hmm. like there's something about capitalism and the structure of like work Mm -hmm. of the if you have a nine to five or maybe worse you have something that's like crazier like you work eight hours you're you have enough time to eat maybe do one fun thing Maybe. and go to bed but you're tired and like run errands occasionally like you don't yeah. have time to always think about like your yeah. the time that you have is spent like recovering from the work that you've done exactly and it makes it such that you don't actually have time to reflect on what you are doing every day exactly or to pursue something different if yeah. you're tired of what you've been doing exactly like you know how hard it is to find time to apply to jobs when you're in, in a, a job, job? Or even have time for hobbies. Like, hobbies are out of the question. Even friends you don't really see for a while. And then I'm like, we're, like, living, but is this a life, Mm -hmm. you know? And, like, that becomes my question. And that's kind of, like, the concept there of, like, trying to protect your peace to a certain degree. But it's just, like, don't break my And you don't have enough time to answer it. Unless you you have the luxury of, like, being a rich kid that can take two gap years. Exactly. And, like, tour the world. we're working day to day to survive, to eat to put a like roof over our heads you get max like two weeks off in a year like it's just sick it's It's actually really sick it's not sustainable (laughs) also is what i'm thinking about i'm just like we're not meant to be living like this when you think about the fact that also like there used to be a seven day work week Mm. and they made the weekends there was enough time for people to spend money to keep the like economy and flow it's also crazy because it's just like I actually think there is a capitalist argument that like if people had more free time they probably would actually spend even more like exactly. we all would win yeah. I guess I suppose <laughs> we all meaning like people in like 
the man. The man. I don't, I <laughs> don't know much don't about know. the economy. Yeah, I don't. I'm not, we're neither of us are economists. If no, you truly, are, I'm a print money advocate person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just like, make more. Just like make more, because I'm like, you made the system <laughs> anyway. I'm like, is more. it arbitrary? I'm like, and give me some. That's Damn. right. Like, give everybody a little bit. <laughs> just they give, did just give everybody a little bit. Did, did they actually? We need to get a yeah. When they gave the money out. Oh yes, yes, I do remember. I do remember that. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have that type of conversation with an actual pro economy that actually is. knows how the economy works. I would like works, to but... learn a little bit more about the economy, just because I think i have just been kind of out of sight, out of mind. I'm just like yeah. I have enough money just to save myself. If I knew how the big system worked and all the churning parts, mm-hmm. it would break my brain because I know myself, and I'm like I'm gonna get so obsessed yeah. with it, and it's gonna be like dystopian mm. like i'm gonna feel like i'm in a matrix like some things i'm just like i gotta ignorance and yeah i'm gonna be a passive yeah and i hate that it's the economy because people keep telling me to invest too oh my god that i'm supposed to do yeah. stocks don't get me started let's talk about that another time stocks. i cannot get Child. into all of that no you're but, right though you're so right yeah it's just i don't know but i think i've been reflecting on it and i think the pandemic was a really big turning point i think in a lot of ways mm-hmm. for this i think people's priorities really just, just, I think we people just had more free time on their hands, honestly, yeah. to just sit and, yeah, reflect and, like, think about what was important mm-hmm. to them, like, how they want to spend their time. It was also a scary time, you know, when you're confronted with so much death as well, too. Yeah. I think you see... You think about things differently. You think about things differently, and you see that it's also not that deep. This job, also, that you have been, like, breaking your soul for, does not give a shit about you. Yeah. They will drop you on a dime. And right, the, the layoffs? And the layoffs were crazy, you know? Yeah. And people were just like, I can't like, forget keep this. doing this. Yeah, forget, forget this. You know, this. it was a big, like, forget this vibe that I think is contributed to this. Yeah, you start to realize how much was obsolete, like... Yeah. traveling to the office the amount of time that takes and like how unnecessary in a lot of jobs that yeah. is like you Even know the work you do in a day like remote work as well too I'm just like you're sending a couple emails a day like you know and like really, it's not that serious mm-hmm. you know like we can have more free time this is never I mean but, unless you work in like certain industries it's yeah, more likely than not like the that. right the type of seriousness that they approach work with is just made up yeah. all the deadlines Made, made up, up. And like you find that if they need to be pushed back people you'll live push them push them like push them <laughs> you gotta go you gotta go no truly truly mm. yeah mm. it also okay. just was like it, in t- on top of that just like tiredness and exhaustion it was just like sad it was sad it was just also like thinking about feelings more like yeah. you had to spend more time with yourself sort of what you said like the picking yeah. up of hobbies makes you think of like the question of like why wasn't I always doing stuff that I wanted to yeah uh, whether it was a longing for things you could no longer do or mm-hmm. picking up of things that you didn't do in the past it was just like okay if capitalism wasn't part of this like how am I just gonna like yeah. how do I want to live yeah yeah and that was the question which you don't normally have enough time to you ask have yourself. Time to yeah. yourself and then once you have the time to sit and think and you get the answers that job's not a part of it what like I came to value seeing my friends so much more I came mm-hmm. to value I don't know, just having the time, I think, to sit and think, honestly. Just, like, being able to be intentional with yeah, myself, yeah. too, and pursue things that brought me joy. I, I started my passion project yeah. during COVID, mm-hmm. and then we started this podcast yeah. during because we had enough time to sit and be like, Literally. we've got things to say. Like, my thoughts are good. My thoughts yeah. are good, and, like, I want to share them. I don't know, that pandemic was a big turning point, but I think it did change the way that I think thought about capitalism yeah, and labor, definitely. and that's influencing the way that my job search looks now mm. i'm just like i think also the fact that all of my internships have been remote that i did in college as well too mm-hmm. has been contributing to that mm. as well i'm like there's something about i guess starting off my career kind of in yeah. a laid back type of field i'm just like child no I'm there like, definitely you is a difference me if you try to come to there the office. definitely is a difference because i'd be like working with my coworkers that were have been in their jobs for like 15 years Jeez. and the way that we talk about like me coming to the office is rare yeah. and they talk about it as like an easy option that like we should engage a lot and I'm always just like what they, but think about what they've been living through though yeah. but that was the norm a commute for so every many day. years commute every day meetings all in person like they didn't have like the sweatpants zoom mm. era and that's all I know you know yeah. so I'm like for me to try and do something different and I think that's the case maybe for a lot of young people or for this next generation of workers mm-hmm. like people who are like graduating college now they did classes yeah. online yeah they don't give a shit it's that. crazy I mean it's like we I think this is worth getting into before we move to the like yeah. what if capitalism wasn't yeah I think something that 
this brings to mind is like generationally how we even show up in the workplace following the pandemic following like seeing all previous generations have a certain relationship with labor Mm -hmm. i think the way that gen z shows up at work is really interesting Mm -hmm. and it's obviously a topic for debate a lot Mm -hmm. something that millennials as we mentioned will and millennials and beyond will say like people don't want to work some study just came out about like the gen z will quit jobs super quickly yeah the amount of time that you spend in a job for our generation is a lot less than the previous ones Mm -hmm. i feel like it's worth talking about yeah if we think the rumors are true Mm -hmm. not only if they're true about gen z not wanting to work but also if they're justified fair and is there a line Mm -hmm. because like for me i I actually and maybe like you said i am a capricorn but i I tell her she's a capricorn there is an extent to which i admire like work ethic yeah in someone and also like have a desire to build it within myself yeah but and i can't blame the girls that don't yeah i can't blame the girls that don't want to work yeah. and i don't want to work either but i also was like some days like when i, I had a two-month period sorry this is like a, no, going is a rant but it's going to have a point i believe you i had like a two-month period where i wasn't working last year and it was amazing but i also was kind of just like Lupin. loopy i really it's my like mind. okay like i, I should that. do something like there's something that should be measurable yeah but anyways, I bring that, say that all to say, I wonder if there are circumstances in which the rumors are true. What Kim Kardashian said was right. The girls don't want to work okay. anymore. And it's maybe not always justified. Okay. And that, like, I've heard a lot of stories of just, like, friends of mine who have jobs. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like your job, yes, is just a job. But it's also, like, your job affects other people's time. Yeah. And, like, when you have a manager and you're doing sloppy work and your manager has to, like, do everything behind you, yeah. you're now, like, taking away from their quality of life because it's probably taking away Because now they time. have to go and do yeah. their... No, that's just so that's rude, kind of yeah. where I'm just, like, I've seen Gen Z in circumstances in which they've been acute. They. Some of us. Yeah. have been <laughs> accused of, like being lazy in which i do think it's true and it's actually detrimental and like it's selfish no i get like you know like you're just being generally inconsiderate in that point and i'm just kind of like is there a line Mm -hmm. what is the line okay how do you balance having a job because Mm -hmm. as we've identified it's kind of a necessity unless you come from really particular circumstances or take really particular routes yeah fair. <laughs> meaning like you get a sugar daddy or something because yeah. i don't know how else you gonna do it yeah, i've seen the girls um, out which there. like no shame and we love tell we us stand. how no tell us <laughs> <laughs> tell us how <laughs> no but, but that's real no it's you know what i mean like, i know exactly what you're talking about yeah i think the rumors are true one i think i've seen the study that you're talking about i think mm-hmm. we definitely are hired turnover like people used to stay in jobs that they hated for like 30 40 years gen z's like if i'm not happy i'm gonna leave like that's part Literally. of the like culture of individualism mm-hmm. i think that gen z has and like protecting the peace like i think we're a lot more selfish yeah than previous generations in ways and, that we should be and some ways that we should yeah. be and like less willing to like compromise and self-sacrifice like if a boss is treating us shitty we're gonna be like i don't deserve that and yeah. like dip out in a way that maybe some previous generations would have felt more inclined like they mm-hmm. had to stay again it could have just been for the simple fact of not having the plethora of options right, right. around or like accessibility mm-hmm. to know that there are other opportunities out there. But this line that you're talking about is very, very real. And I think, but there are just some people, I think that that is not a Gen Z specific thing. Mm. I think I would like to think that this conversation and when people say I don't dream of labor, they are talking about like fundamentally our lives should not be us exchanging labor for survival yeah you know like mm-hmm. that should not be right what it is but there are some people who are just like are lazy and mm-hmm. are and they take this to the extreme yeah there were some also some other people who were using this i don't dream of labor to like it, it was like a tiktok trend for a while and they were like posting pictures of their like luxury type of like vacations and i'm like you're missing the point right like, entirely mm-hmm. and you're making this capitalistic and you're right. being counterintuitive right. Yes, that's yeah. Software. Yes, because it's, it's like there, and then I think it's broader than just. Sorry, I hope I didn't. No, up. go ahead. I think it's broader than just like work. Yeah, it's also something about like, and this reminds me of our second episode, first episode, manifesting. Yeah, first. Where it's like there is an instant reward desire. Yeah, that like. Work doesn't have to be con- all consuming, but it also might not always be free of challenge. Yeah, and like. Challenge can be good. Challenge is yeah, where you grow. Yeah. And some like, people are content to come work can actually make you a better person. Yeah, I, like, I can name a lot of people that need to work. Fair. Honestly. And that's you, sick. And this is a really hot take. <laughs> Maybe. But it's, like. It's a hot take. But I think this 
to me also connects to what you were saying about not having anything to do and kind of like just feeling I don't I think the issue comes when the productivity becomes associated with your self-worth like you are still worthy mm-hmm. as a person you can just sit around and just sit there and exist and like you have done your due yeah. diligence for the day like mm-hmm. existing is enough yeah. you know but there is something there's that like gratification I guess for like seeing the targets of like moving there's like progress I feel good when I do things I feel yeah. good when I'm productive even if it's not this job that I hate though. Right, like it right. could be a hobby else, it could yeah. be hanging out with my friends I do need to do something if yeah, I lie in bed all day I'll feel strange but I, it doesn't have to be connected with mm-hmm. like labor and like specifically labor that is inequitable I think that's part of this right. like conversation too like it is those like bosses who are like taking advantage of you yeah, in a right, lot of no, ways okay, where yeah. your labor's not being you know I think about like I've been thinking a lot more about service workers especially mm-hmm. I saw this exhibit in the Whitney I wish I could remember mm. the name but it was about like just like a lot of like service workers like UPS delivery people like just, and I don't know other types of service workers but mm-hmm. they were basically talking just like about their experiences and like they had dreams too and like there was like a video portion of it and someone was talking about how they like wanted to make films and like yeah. dream, but like they have to like do UPS yeah. to make money and I'm like things like that make me really sad because I'm like that's the reality yeah. you know like that is just what it is to be alive and I, I hate to see like dreams mm-hmm. not be able to be fruition like come to fruition yeah, because yeah. of that but yeah like the people you know it's like, tough it's, it's all, yeah I hear yeah. you it's it's all like it's all relative and it really is all circumstantial but yeah. I yeah I just wanted to hear the thoughts because yeah. I've heard I have like a friend of mine who is a millennial and a manager she told me of a story that's of someone Gen Z that she hired and like it just was so unprofessional like mm. it was so unprofessional in like self-serving from the jump where it was just like that's you know crazy. she committed to doing three you know she committed in the hiring process like i'm gonna work monday wednesday friday and then come the first monday was like actually no i only want to work thursday fridays now and like you didn't tell me that like i needed to clarify that and that is a very like one person thing but i also heard i don't know i just think some of the girls are like getting a little bit confused because i'm just like come on you guys pull back the reins a little bit exactly that's all i want to say it's also nice to be good at things i personally enjoy being good at things and doing my job well but i've always been a work smarter not harder person right so i will do the bare bare minimum minimum and still be good but i will make sure that i'm submitting quality work but i will not be working harder and overtime yeah i have to and to be clear i'm not yeah i'm not trying to co-op the man's message i do think there's a lot of pressure at the end of the day to like do more than you need and to agree to things you don't want in 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 that act against the things that you actually do want for yourself and that's wrong so So ultimately find your balance still find things that allow you to grow if you're going to have to make money doing jobs if that's what you want but like just do what you want and be a good person at the end of the day that's about it like that's all we owe nobody i feel like being a good person is come to me i know it's like a privilege for that to feel like a fun fundamental but at the end of the day it is like yeah desire to like spend time with people i love Mm -hmm. like connection i feel like personal connection is everything you know like when it really comes down to it like all you have is like the people you've touched and like interacted with and i've come to just prioritize that a lot more so i like make time Mm -hmm. for it when i can and we are gonna like wrap this up with just our thoughts like a little bit about what we would like our lives to look like if we didn't have to work and yeah and i think just the thing that's most important to me is i love like freedom to be able to choose like i would like independence is really important to me i love to just like bop around and like travel Mm -hmm. around and like just be able to like live on a whim i think that i'm as someone who like is on a visa in this country Mm -hmm. i just think that like capitalism and like having a job and that security is something that's very important to me yeah and i would feel so much freer if i didn't have to worry Mm -hmm. about things like that agree when I made decisions and yeah lovely. I hear you I mm-hmm. what I want outside of capitalism for myself is I, I second a lot of what you said mm-hmm. I think the flexibility of mm-hmm. like not being tied to such a rigid calendar yeah ever would be a luxury like yeah. to have your time truly be your own to dictate what you do and when seems like a dream that like you know liter- it is a dream of mine it and it, like it literally is a dream like it's hard to fathom <laughs> yeah no, truly. um i think also like community and yeah. like something that is self-sustained mm-hmm. and like i'm thinking of i think i've talked about this before but like 
I was just in Barbados not too long ago, and I was thinking about, like, one, my grandma, like, grows all the food that she eats, and what she doesn't grow, one of her neighbors grows, and they, like, exchange it with each other, and, like, someone is coming to, like, drop off stuff just because, and, like, you know, everyone that she has in her house, whether it's the repairman, or whether it's, like, she needs a ride somewhere, like, it's all familiar, you know, it's just, like, somebody that you know, it's not, you're not, she engages so few corporations that it's, like, amazing, Yeah, and I honestly that would i would love that yeah it just seems like you know like my life is i have everything that i need Mm -hmm. feeling as though you have everything you need within reach and not having to like i don't know to give your money i mean this is now not outside of capitalism but like even within capitalism a life that i want to live is one in which i feel like i have choice of where i spend my money and to whom and like what it contributes to like we have so little choice from you can't buy body wash without engaging a company that probably is really like that's sh- terrible probably. terrible practices yeah you know so like it would just be nice to like not have to worry about my that. whole life sustained by farmers markets like uh, everything you know so just nice. like carpooling and like all of those things that's yeah nice. but i think what you said about having what you need and that being enough it, like at that's such a beautiful feeling mm-hmm. to be sustained and satisfied and not to like be craving for more like yeah. have the, the, the external desire that you should be craving more mm-hmm. basically you know like to just feel content Literally, like i have mind. it all happiness yeah. i've got it a connection and sometimes Beautiful. i feel that way now which is really nice in the luxury but it's like i couldn't if i don't have this job so yeah that's so true so, so it's all connected yeah. <laughs> it really is all relative but where we come back to yeah. at the end of this episode there's a lot of layers in the world, right. still got work in the morning we literally still got work in the morning um and i'm also looking for a job you on the way to baby's hire yeah so you know hire um, girl. she does podcasting she does yeah. blogging she I does do everything all. sustainability she's your go-to so thank you for that pitch i of appreciate course. you yeah Capricorn queen Okay. All right. Final question. Let's wrap it up. What's bringing us joy? Who? Do you want to go first? Yeah. yeah. NYC summer about to start. So true. Everything Block is about to be amazing. Button. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm about to blow all my money. I agree. Blow all your money season is underway. But, but all like good experiences. Yeah, exactly. Good experiences. I've come to tell myself are always exactly. worth it. Exactly. And, and I'll take mm-hmm. it. And my little cousin is coming next weekend from Sweden. Two of them, little Ooh. cousins. And they've never been to New York City before. The only place they've been in the U.S. is Massachusetts. That's crazy. So I'm, like, about to change their lives and also, like, change um, my life because I'm so excited. Like, I just so think of all the, like, touristy shit, like, we're going to take, take them everywhere. Like, also, they're biracial. And, like, okay. they live in Sweden. So I have, like, I have to show them black things. They're coming on Juneteenth weekend, like, to oh, New York. So I feel fun. a lot of, like, pressure Wait, to, like... 13 and 15. The girl's 13, the boy's 15. Okay, I think that's so, fun. Yeah, I'm just like... Take them out. Perfect. So like, I'm so excited about it. So I, really I've cool. just been making the itinerary. They're coming later this week. Okay, so. okay. love that. Yeah, that's, what I'm, that. that's what's bringing me joy yeah. in, in advance. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. I also have a joy in advance. I'm going to Elutra in the Bahamas oh, yeah. this weekend. Um, well, I'm going for two weeks, but I'm leaving this weekend. And I'm going to be doing a summer camp there mm-hmm. for girls 11 to 16. It'll be very fun. They're going to learn poetry, photography. They're going to snorkel in their environment. It's all about like environmental storytelling. And they're going to create projects of their own, like poems and mm-hmm. short stories and things about their environment and environmental justice and climate yeah. change. So it'll be very fun. I'm excited to be home. I'm excited it's the summer. You and know, then, I'm excited mm-hmm. to be swimming. I might get my free diving certification, Ooh, which yeah. will be fun. Yeah, I'm just Literally, feeling good. Summertime. Feeling good. I had some good watermelon yesterday. Summertime. Really juicy. Do you remember? Sorry, one more thing. Do you remember when I said I didn't like watermelon? Oh, I really do remember that. That was blasphemous. I am so sorry. Did you not try it? I think I only ever had bad watermelon. Like, you know when Like you, the pale ones? Yeah, like the um, pale ones. Yeah, that would do it. Because bad watermelon is something else. Bad watermelon was just like, it just tasted like the rind, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I don't see that. Do you have that deep red? I got that deep red, juicy drip. <laughs> 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 it, it was wonderful. I had a great time. I'm like <laughs> witnessing growth in real time on this podcast. No, truly, I found such a long way. I don't I'm remember what season that was. Season two, maybe. It was a while ago. It was a, yeah. it was a minute ago. Ciao. I've come a long way. Well, anyway. on that note. On that note.
that's all that we have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Yes, long yeah. overdue episode, but yeah. like a feeling timely once again, as Absolutely. always. So, always timely. Yeah, I hope you guys loved it. In mm-hmm. the meantime, keep up with us on all of the socials Absolutely. on TikTok at Black Girl Blueprint, on Instagram at Black Girl Blueprint, on Twitter at B Girl Blueprint. Absolutely. And if you like this episode, you can let us know by subscribing. You can leave us a review, rate us five stars. Yeah. And also DM us. We love to get really? messages from you all. And like, I always make our day. We like mm. screenshots it to each other. Really? We discuss Like, oh my God, someone squeal. actually listens to us We're talk. Like, we always forget that. But there's so many listeners. Yeah. So I hate you guys. I love our little community. Yeah, it's wonderful. And we will see you all next time. Yeah. Okay. See you next time. See Bye. You next time. Bye.